Hi, welcome back to the Downtown Den uh, for our latest podcast in the uh, Meet the Partner series. And uh, I'm Frank McKenna, the Chief Executive and Group Chair of Downtown and Business. Delighted to be joined today by Greg Johnson, who's the Managing Director of Warwick Development. So, Greg, welcome to the Den. Thank you for having me, Frank. Yep, thank you very much. Hope you're impressed with these salubrious surroundings, sir. Of course, I'm always impressed by you, Frank. <laughs> always impressed. <laughs> now, listen, uh, before we get into a conversation about the nuts and bolts of the business, just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved with Warwick Development, sir, and what the company actually delivers. Yeah, so I started working at Warwick in 2007. i just finished um, my A-levels. I was quite academic at school, Frank, to be fair. Um, but I'd got to that stage where I was really sort of getting fed up of education, to be perfectly honest. And um, the thought of going to university, which would have been the natural sort of progression for me, just didn't appeal. I thought three, four, five years in, in further education just wasn't for me. Um, so I had a frank conversation with my dad, who um, was um, just about to take over as managing director at Warwick. Um, he was in the process of um, buying my uncle out who founded the business. Um, business was founded in 98, so we're 25 years old now. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, my dad with some private investors was looking to buy my uncle out in 2008. And if he was here now alongside me, he'd tell you it was five minutes before the world fell into a uh, financial recession. Of course, and, yeah. Um, yeah, he was, he was very unfortunate for, for the time. And to be perfectly honest with you, um, for the first time, the, the business had, had debt um, and the economy obviously um, took a, a major hit. Um, and testament to him, I don't think I realized at the time when I joined the business in 2007, but the way he grew the business in a, in a difficult time um, and maybe having a bit more of an appreciation for, for the role and what it entails now myself, um, it's really impressive to be fair. Um, I think when I grew up, I looked at my uncle as a, a real entrepreneur and maybe sort of, um, looked at him as, as, as a real business leader. I think now, obviously I still have huge respect for, for him founding the business. Um, but I think what my dad done between 2008 and, and 2021, um, when he left the business was, um, was real sort of impressive. Um, we we grew from one unit to four units. We currently occupy over a hundred thousand square foot, um, up hundred and twenty employees, um, and the and the business is 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 a manufacturing business. Um, we manufacture windows and doors, new PVC as well as new <coughs> PVC as well as aluminium, um. And we've added things along the, the years, such as bifolding doors and roof lanterns and things like that. So um, the product range has really grown over the years. Um, as I say, the infrastructure and the, and the battery space um, really grown. And as I say, for him to do that, I think in a, in a more of a difficult time is, uh, is really, really impressive. So I was really fortunate. Um, to, to join the family business and to sort of uh, have a fully immersed um, experience, I think. Um, I always remember the first day um, after deciding not to go to university, he said, okay, tomorrow you join the family business um, and there will be no special treatment. There will be no special treatment. That lingers still to this day in the back of my mind. Um, and I think at the time, I was a little bit sort of, not resentful of it, but I didn't really understand it. I don't think like I understand it now. Um, I had to have that fully immersed ground and, and learn the business from um, bottom up. Because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have been able to um, deal with the position of managing director that I, I find myself in now. Um, I wouldn't have the respect of the, the staff and the employees and the management team around me. Um, so I actually done 15 years of, um, learning the, the business from, from scratch, um, shop floor, working on the shop floor, then moved into admin, office admin, making terrible cups of teas and coffees probably for six months or so. Um, 
And then I really sort of found my feet into the sales uh, role. So we have like, a, and we still to this day, we have say a team of 12 who do sales estimating. Um, and that's just basically um, pricing windows and doors for the trade customers and for the uh, commercial contractors and things. Um, and then from there, I spent more time in the production team that gave me a little bit more of a sort of uh, technical background. Um, and then the big one, which was which stood me in really good stead for today, was the the sort of the financial learning. So in our um, business, we have our in-house sort of accounts team. So learning the financials of business, profit and loss, and balance sheets, and everything to do with the financial side of things. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I spent over 18 months in there and that really did sort of stand me in good stead to learn business. My dad was an accountant by trade, so that come naturally to him. Um, but for me, yeah, it was, uh, it was 15 years of really sort of um, hard, immersive experience. And unfortunately, the reason I, I had to sort of um, step into the, into the hot seat, so to speak, was back in 2021, dad got uh, diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, and it come at a bit of a shock, Frank, to be perfectly honest with you. He's fit and healthy and doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. And um, I think because he's a, a real good businessman and a business leader, I always saw him as a bit untouchable. You know what I mean? He's one of them really strong sort of characters. And um, and yet it came came out of the blue. Um, so he had to leave the business quite suddenly, to be fair. Um, and yeah, I took over, um, and it was a big step up, really difficult. Um, you was that correct? So that would have been the beginning of 22. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it was a really difficult period. Uh, personally, I think um, I'd, never, I'd never suffered with mental health before. Mental health had, um, I mean, I suppose, albeit, there was no special treatment. I'd always been given opportunities in life and I'm, and I'm really thankful for that. Um, and maybe I feel a little bit of, of guilt as well for having opportunities that others don't necessarily um, have in life. Um, but to say I'd lived a comfortable blanketed life and then all of a sudden 2022 was the first time I'd really sort of um, suffered from a mental health perspective because it was a big personal emotional shock to you wasn't it yeah yeah there was there's so many elements at play all at once Frank to be fair my, my dad's diagnosis um and just coming to terms with that as a son yeah um taking over the family business um the big, responsibilities that brought pressure. with it yeah. pressure yeah. yeah i'd had an uncle who had founded the business done really well i'd had a dad who'd grown the business in harder times um and it was the pressure well their generation can can I step up? Can I match that their efforts? Can I succeed in the way they did? Um, so that brought with it its own pressures. Um, all of a sudden, there's 120 employees and 120 families that are relying on you and your decision, and and the pressure that brings with it is is difficult. Um, it, the main problem or the main pressure that I felt was I was going into a family environment, a business whereby. My grandfather worked there, my dad worked there, my auntie worked there, my sister worked there. Um, my uncle had, had retired, now my dad's illness, uh, my grandfather had passed away. Um, so it didn't have that family feel to it anymore. I felt very alone and very isolated, I think, for the very first time. Um, and I was, I'd pull up at work in the morning and pull up to the car park and I'd, between me and you, I'd think to myself, got to go into my dad's office now, sit at his chair, do his job. Um, so it was very mentally sort of taxing from that perspective. Um, to throw in alongside, um, I have two little girls, um, Gia and Aria were born around the same time. Um, so the sleep deprivation, the <laughs> becoming yeah. a, a new dad, the responsibilities of being a, a father um, and the pressures then to succeed in business for them as well. Um, so all of that, all at the same time, was, was ready Baptism to discuss. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire, yeah. Um, then Vladimir Putin decided he was going to invade Ukraine. Um, mm-hmm. 
So that um, didn't consult any of us either. Didn't phone me, didn't phone me to say, I know you've got a lot on your plate at the minute, Greg, but uh, <laughs> um, there's going to be some additional pressures to, to face on a business day-to-day -day level as well. So yeah, rise in energy costs were, were massive for the, for the manufacturing sector. This is all within my first sort of 12 months. Um, dealing with suppliers and um, glass in particular was a, was a major one because um, the process obviously of making glasses, uh, energy is consumed a vast amount in terms of furnaces and heating the glass and things like that. So um, so energy costs for, for even heating our um, building itself rose by a quarter of a million quid. Um, so yeah, we had a real difficult sort of day-to-day -day business journey as well to contend with whilst learning on the job so to speak as well of the role um so let me just take a step back a second greg if i may because you obviously listen you, you had a 15 year apprenticeship in a sense yes. but had you had a conversation with your dad where there was going to be a transition and what was that time scale so i suppose what i'm asking is how sooner did you have to pick up the reins than was planned yeah, yeah, good question. And and there was there was conversation um, before his diagnosis. There was conversation around okay, future succession plans. Um, there was there would have been another couple of years, I think, of a transitional period. I would have probably shadowed his role a lot closer. Um, and I think my dad probably would have maybe done three or four days a week. Um, but. After the two-year transitional period, it dropped down to maybe three days a week. Um, so I'd have probably still had another couple of years of him working part-time as well to sort of uh, earmark for any sort of questions and things like that. And don't get me wrong, look, he's, he's at the end of the telephone and had been over the last couple of years to to speak to. Um, I think he feels I'm comfortable enough now to hold the reins myself. So um, so that's testament well, maybe to myself. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, there would have been there would have been a transitional period. Um, but it was almost in the deep ends without your armbands and it's sink or swim, Frank. So it's um really pleasing to to know today I'm I am i confident to say that, you know, we, we, we swam and, and the reason that we, we did was because um we quickly um got a good management team around me. Um my dad's management team had served him really, really well. I had a mixture of of some of his management team. But I wanted to sort of have my my guys too. I'd seen do really well in areas that I'd um, been working in within the business. Um, so yeah, we brought a, a younger sort of um, management team, complemented it with the experience as well that we had on site, and they were instrumental for me. They they really sort of uh, helped me over those uh, difficult couple of years, um, took the pressure off um, where they needed to. Um, so yeah, so really, really thankful, um, really thankful for having the opportunity to manage a, a very successful business. We're a, we're a business that, as I say, is, is 25 years old and um, it wasn't broke by any means. So there was no no reason for me to fix it in any which way. All I sort of envisaged and wanted to do with my sort of stamp on the business was to was to elevate the business in terms of its profile, um, rebrand it a little bit. Our trade name is Warwick Development, um, and I always say I inherited a, a brand and nightmare to some degree because Warwick suggests that we're geographically located in Warwick. <laughs> development suggested that we're a development Your company. Builders. We're yeah, builders, yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah. So we we've done some good work with um, some brands and, and marketing companies and and some PR companies, um, and we 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 dropped the development from the brand name, and we we brand ourselves as Warwick Northwest. Um, so the last year or two has been um, a journey to tell more people about us because whilst we're a successful business, so on that, as I say, has been going for a good period of time now. There's still plenty of people within the Northwest that don't know of Warwick. Um, and we're a company that, whilst we're a manufacturing business, um, we have a we have a saying at Warwick, um, what do we make? So we make windows and doors, um, but we want to be profitable and we want to make money. Um, but what we also, or what I want to do as well is to sort of 
to use our platform to make a difference where we can. So 25 years of loyalty from the city region and from tradesmen and contractors and developers who have been loyal to, to the business. Um, if we can give back to, to the city region, um, then that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to use the platform um, to give back. We have a couple of local charities that we support. Um, being a Bootle-based company, um, we have a, a Bootle-based charity called Y Kids, um, who does some really great work within the uh, borough. Um, so, yeah, we want to tell more people about what a good company we are. We have good morals, good ethics. We try and be social. Um, our social value um, is is very important to us. Um, and we've become a bit more of a, a go-to sort of for a lot of the social housing companies now. And I think our values maybe resonate a lot with the, with the housing associations for that. Um, so we do quite a, a lot of work with the housing associations across the, the city region. Um, so yeah, so the journey is now is to keep telling, spreading the message of, of Warwick and, and what good that we, we do. Not only do we, we offer a really good service and really good products, well, um, we have a, a real sort of essence on net zero, a drive towards net zero. Have a, uh, an innovative product, which is a window system called Modus. And um, Modus has a, it's not to bore you about windows and doors now, Frank, but Modus has a, a, an additional uh, chamber within the PVC. Um, we couple it with a, a glass unit, which allows us to achieve a window of 0.8U value. So what that means basically is um, the government set a, a future home standard for 2025 that all new built homes had to achieve a, a net zero sort of uh, efficiency. Um, and Modus complements that. Um, and we manufacture that window and have done for, for years, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so we're well ahead of the, the government's sort of standards for, for new build. Um, and the thermal efficiency of the window is, is probably one of the best on the market, to be fair. Um, so yes, we have a, a real sort of onus on the drive towards net zero, um, sustainability, really good with recycling and, and things like that. Um, so we are, we are a good company. We try and conduct business in the right way. Um, yeah. And it's just my job now to, to get out there and tell more people about us. Maintain it and grow it, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's a, a fascinating snapshot of your personal business journey alongside the progress that Warwick have made. And I apologize because I introduced you as the managing director of Warwick Development, so I haven't been keeping up with that, but you um, But I just want to take you back to the first comment you made, in a sense, which was you'd gone as far as you felt you wanted to go in terms of academia, despite the fact that you know, you, you're good, you got your exams, and you could have gone into further education on the university. And, mm -hmm. and I just wondered whether it be from your uncle, from your dad, or from other people that were in and around you at the time, whether even at an early age you had a taste for business. You know, when you went into Warwick, did you actually think, one day I want to be rolling this place in me? Yeah. Um, this is something that I've, I've thought on only, only recently myself, to be fair, Frank, and it's... Um, my uncle, I think, had a... His drive was financial i think he'd tell you if, if he was open and honest he he had a, he wanted to make money he wanted to do well and he and he did and he retired early great my dad's passion and drive was just the passion for business i think and and um i mean he'd be there till seven or eight o'clock at night um and he he loved work and he fully immersed himself in work um for me don't think I have either of those two things that drive me. I think my drive was always to prove that I could do it. Um, I think I'd seen, as I say, growing up, my uncle and my dad doing it. And I always pondered the question to myself, Can are you good enough to do it? Can you step up? Um, I don't feel that I've, uh, okay, I've done well. I don't feel I've, I've, I've ticked that box just yet or proved that just yet, but that's that's. Yeah, well, you're only two years in. Don't put yourself under too course, much pressure. Okay, yeah. So um, I've got, um, I've still got a long way to sort of to go up now. But um, but yeah, that's that's what drives me on. I think that and the girls. Um, 
family is very important to me. I think since my dad's diagnosis again, it sort of puts a lot of things into perspective. Yeah. Um, I mean, he worked tirelessly, and I think he always envisaged that, you know, he'd enjoy the fruits of his labor later on in life. Um, and that's sometimes not always guaranteed, is it? So you've got to get the right balance. I think you've got to um, got to work hard, strive, obviously, for perfection as much as you can within the work environment, but also get that work and life balance correct. So look, don't get wrong, we'll keep the doors open. And if, if anything goes wrong, we'll fulfill orders and stay late and we'll do anything to pull um, pull out the bag for customers. But um, we have a bit more of a, an onus now on if we can, the doors close at five o'clock, we all go home, let's spend time with family and um, only have a small window of an evening between um, the time we get home and the, and the children going to bed. So it's important to me to do the the nighttime routines and the, the storybooks and the bath times and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think that is another sort of part to it that, that drives me on is to do well, prove I can do it. We'll try and do it in a way as well whereby we get the right balance. And when you take over a company that is successful, is grown, um, that brings a different type of pressure, I always think, because if you go into a place which is on the floor or is being underperforming, then it's quite easy to point to little victories, little successes. Well, we grew 2%, that's fine, because look where we were. You go into a business which is doing well, which is well regarded as a good order book, good partners, good stakeholders. It sounds to me as though you have a decent team as well. Um, so I guess the first thing was don't break anything, do no harm, you know. And, and then, you know, what I think is really admirable in terms of the approach you've taken is you spotted perhaps a weakness within the business, which was profile and marketing. <laughs> and maybe it just needed that fresh pair of eyes or that younger approach because people of a certain age have a reluctance around marketing and PR. Um, and, and it seems to me, you know, because this and Warwick did my windows and doors, um, and that was through one of your guys, John McDonough, who I knew. Um, so it was sort of word of mouth. Um, but as I say, I think you've taken the brand to, to a different level. So two questions in one there, I suppose, Greg. You know, was it a bit daunting? going into that, as I say, successful environment and thinking, I don't want to f*** this up. Um, but equally, were you a little bit excited as well that you'd be able to put your own stamp on it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so the first sort of six months, I felt like, yeah, don't touch anything, don't break anything. Um, it was almost steering the ship, so to speak, for the first part. Um, and then when I sort of um, found my feet a little bit more, it was the potential that I could see within the business was still huge. Um, as I say, we will turn over £12 million this year, but it's um, still got so much potential. For starters, we, we still run on one shift. Um, so um, the the capacity that we could have to, to really kick on is, is exciting. Um, and the, the brand awareness and the profile and the marketing side, um, I mean, joining um, downtown and business, um, and having those organizations that are able to help us facilitate getting our name out within the Liverpool business community. Um, and whilst I've got the opportunity, I'd like to say a big thank you to the business community and to the downtown community in particular as well, because we came into this sort of uh, world um, not really knowing. I'm, I'm being a little bit naive to it, to be fair. And everybody has really welcomed us as a business. Um, everyone's very supportive of local sort of businesses and everyone's really keen for people to do well. Um, and I think that's really sort of admirable, to be fair, to have. I know we say, don't we, scousers look after our own and stuff like that, but um, you really do feel that sort of camaraderie within the business community, especially within the downtown community. So, um, yeah. I've enjoyed that side to the business. I've enjoyed exploring new ideas, new um, possibilities to grow the potential. Um, 
And within the city region itself, there's so much potential for, for Warwick to sort of get involved in as well. I mean, I uh, read an article on LBN only uh, yesterday. Um, the council have just passed a £110 million project at Love Lane. Um, so over 500 apartments to be built. Um, I mean, the city's in a good place in terms of, say, the, the knowledge quarter, for, for instance, and the sort of the um, super hub of the SciTech, which is really exciting. I I generally think that we could have the Bootle sort of corridor um, from Liverpool waterfront, um, which is where obviously we're located, especially with the, the transformational sort of uh, projects going on, like the Everton Stadium and the Love Lane development, even the tobacco warehouse and things like that. Um, there's huge opportunities there over the next few years um, and huge opportunities for us as a manufacturing business um, to have work right on our doorstep um, and to get involved in these sort of projects, which will mean so much to us as a business because they're part of our fabric, they're right there. I mean, you, you walk out of our door and you can see the stadium, you know what I mean, sort of thing. So um, I think, yeah, I think the, the Knowledge Quarter, we could replicate something along the la that lines with uh, Liverpool Waterfront and maybe in the future, Bootle could be a manufacturing super hub or, you know, we could um, really kick on some great Bootle businesses, um, to be fair. You, like, so off the top of my head, Wild Bang, um, Warwick, you've got um, the Savini Group. There's some really impressive businesses within Bootle and there's so much potential as a business, as I say, but also so much potential for our area and for our sort of borough. Uh, so I'd like to see, I'm excited, as I say, for, for the future to see what that holds as well. As a brutal boy, it doesn't surprise me. The place is on the up, no <laughs> question about it. So about um, listen, you know, this sort of initial approach that you took, a bit of a fresh move, as you say, into the marketing profile area that Warwick hadn't necessarily uh, been certainly interested in, but certainly wasn't a priority, certainly not a priority that you've given that aspect of business, culminated in you winning an award last year. Um, so I think it was Young Entrepreneur, wasn't it? Young Entrepreneur, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, Young Entrepreneur. Uh, Liverpool Award. Liverpool Award, yeah. It was a great night, to be fair. And you know, what always sticks out in my mind about the, the evening, obviously winning the award was fantastic. And, and one that I didn't expect in the slightest, to be fair, because... Um, yeah, whilst I knew we'd had a, a, a good year, a successful year, some of the caliber of people on the shortlisting, um, the Monterex lads in particular, um, I know they picked up an award on the evening and rightly so. Um, so there's some great young entrepreneurs in the city and you see what those two lads have done from um, the bedroom to turning over globally now over 50, 60 million, wherever they do. So uh so super impressive yeah so to be in and amongst them names and them company names was was great to win the award was amazing um and so much so that um we decided that it would be great to um sponsor this year's awards yeah we're delighted to have warwick as the headline sponsor yeah we we look forward to it it was uh it was a great night and uh, the whole team enjoyed it um and as i say I think this year um, it will help again with the branding and the, and the profiling. Um, gets us in a room full of um, top businesses within the city region. Um, yep, yeah, and we we get to sort of um, tell tell the audience again a little bit about what Warwick is and what we stand for. Everyone always asks me what does Warwick do, and I say oh, I'd rather tell you what Warwick stands for. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, so we'll get we we'll get an opportunity to do that. Um, on the night as well, which is great. Yeah, November, those awards, so it'll soon be here, sadly, won't it? Uh, and before then, we've got the City of Liverpool Business Awards, and now Warwick are off for uh, a team award, if I can put it that way, because obviously Liverpool is about individuals, uh, and that's in July uh, at the Palm House. I don't, have you been to that one before, Greg? No, this will be the first time. The, the venue is, is one that I'm really looking forward to yeah, going to. Yeah, it's fantastic. You'll good... love the night. you love the night. you love the night. And good luck with the, Thank you, the well. award this year. But listen, it's been great to chat to you. As you say, we'll be having a conversation uh, on stage in November at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Uh, and before then, uh, I'm sure you know your paths will be crossing with many, many downtown members from the network. But thanks for coming into the den. It's been great to chat to you.
Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Frank. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Okay, so that was Craig Johnson, the Managing Director of Warwick. And uh, as I say, they are delighted to announce the headlines full set for the 2024 Dale Tell Liverpool Awards. If uh, you want further details, go onto our website. It's at the Crown Plaza Hotel this year. Uh, 420 of Liverpool's finest business leaders will be in the room. Uh, if you want a good party, but also you want to celebrate with some of the best, as I say, in the business in this city, then you will not want to miss a particular night. Thanks for listening to our latest Meet the Partner series, and uh, we'll be back in the Dale Sound End with you very soon.